Hello everyone, my name is Excelsius Maximus, this is Xmax TV, and the official spoiler season for Car Set 2019 just started, so today we have a lot of cars to discuss, so stay tuned. So, as I was saying before, uh, we today just got a huge amount of uh, spoilers, and not just from the car set, but also from the Planeswalker decks. First I'll run through some of the cards that came out in the, the Planeswalker decks that are kinda interesting and then we go for the real meat of the day, let's say. Uh, so most interesting cards that came out of the, um, the Planeswalker decks for me are the two Planeswalkers. Uh, we have uh, another, <laughs> yet another, uh, Liliana and the Tezzeret, which is new, we have not seen Tezzeret in a while. Okay, we, I guess we saw it, it's still in standard actually, but... Okay, uh, we saw Liliana, Liliana way, <clears throat> uh, like just a while ago, and him not, let's say. So Liliana, uh, we know she costs five, three, and, and two black, uh, but we don't know uh, her loyalty points. We, what we know is that uh, her abilities, since it's a planeswalker deck, planeswalker is not really that strong. Just take that in attention. <clears throat> uh, her abilities, like the, uh, she has three, like usual. Her plus one is uh, target player loses to life. Her minus one is return target creature card from your graveyard to your end. And the minus seven, I think she'll probably be a five loyalty uh, planeswalker. So pr maybe you have to do plus one like twice, and then you can do the ultimate. But or maybe since it is a planeswalker from a planeswalker deck. Probably she can have four because they usually are weaker. Um, and so her ultimate, what she does is minus seven. It, she destroys two target creatures, and you can put up to two target creatures from a graveyard uh, into the battlefield under your control. Which is like in that level of like play, it is just almost a game ender. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't think it will see any uh, constructed play, but it's an interesting planeswalker. For Tezzeret, uh, he got he pays six, so we really don't know how much it is. Is uh, uh, oh my god, seriously, <laughs> his loyalty, uh, loyalty counters. But we know the rest. Like his plus one is draw card. Like simple as that. Um, his zero is actually interesting because it's uh, a thing, an ability that he used to have which is, uh, basically turns an artifact into a 5-5 creature in addition to other types that uh, that artifact, uh, artifact already has. And the last one is a minus 7. You basically put how many cards you want from your end into the battlefield turned face down, and they are 5-5 five, five artifacts, which is really strong, actually. So, in a sense, I think she is a little bit stronger than Liliana, but I'm not going to say that is way much stronger. Okay, from the Planeswalker decks also, uh, there is a, a lot of uncommons and commons that are kind of okay, but most interesting cards from it, I think, is some rares. We have a reprint of Shiva Dragon, uh, Shiva and Dragon, uh, it's a oldie but goldie, let's say, um, and we have a few really cool cards. Uh, I think the most noticeable are a green one and a, a, a white one. The green one is Aggressive Mammoth, it costs 3 and 3 green, so it's 6 mana. It is an 8-8 with Trample that gives all your other creatures Trample. It's really straightforward, but it's a really effective creature, I think. Uh, in uh, white we have Sarah Guardian, which costs 4 and 2 white. It's a 5-5 with Flying and Vigilance. And other creatures you control have Vigilance, so it's also really good. Then we have two more interesting cards which is Grave uh, Waker, which is a uh, 6 mana, it costs 4 and 2 black uh, Bird Spirit, which is a 5-5 five, five with flying, and you pay 7, 5 and 2 black, and basically you can reanimate a creature. Uh, it's like kind of really heavy reanimate, and the creature comes uh, tapped, so it's like, eh, I understand it's like, it's supposed to be underpowered thing, but that is a little bit too much underpowered, probably. And then we have Riddle Master Sphinx, which costs 4 and 2 blue, and it is a 5-5 five, five with flying. Man, there is a lot of 5-5s five, with flying in this deck. And basically what she does is she um, and summons something for, uh, some creature for your opponent. And those are the most interesting cards from uh, the, um, the Planeswalker decks. Um, 
there is a few other in comments and comments that are okay, but nothing that much interesting yet. At least for what I think. Okay, from the what we really got today for, uh, for uh, Corset 2019, uh, the most noticeable things is some reprints that are actually really cool. Among them is Dire Graph uh, Ghoul. I don't know if you guys remember, it was a really strong card in uh, Mono Black Zombies in Innistrad. That that thing was a really strong deck. And this was the one drop, it was a 2-2 two, two for 1. Of course it gets in tapped, but you never you never complain about this guy. It was a really strong card. It's, it's the same art actually. And it's still a great creature, right? It's like one uh, a 2-2 two, two for 1 is always good. Uh, the other uh, really noticeable reprints for me, it was Murder, it's always really great in draft. And Gutter Snipe, it's also a really cool creature. It works really well, especially in EZ decks. Of course, it was created to be an EZ thing. So, uh, it's also a really great creature. Oh, and also uh, Relic Wary Tower. It's, a, it's another one that is a reprint also. And it's cool to have this, uh, this card back around. Um, other than this, I don't see uh, much more reprints that are that much noticeable. Of course, we have Shock and a few other things, but those are more recent. We have them. We have had them recent, uh, more in more recent uh, editions of the game. Not editions. Yeah, uh, sets. That's what I mean. Sorry. <laughs> and but then for the new cards, that's what we are here for. And. I'm going to talk mostly about rares and some comments that I found they are really interesting. There is a lot of comments going around, so if you guys want, you know, just go check the spoiler uh, sites and give a look around of them. Uh, but most most noticeable for me were especially this one vampire that is called Vampire Sovereign. I might be wrong, I don't remember if this, this was already printed. If it was, I'll probably correct myself when I edit this video. Uh, but it's actually a really cool card. It's basically five uh, for a three-four flyer. Okay, it's until now it's not that great, but when it gets in, he, your opponent loses three life and you gain three life. So actually, it's a six-life swing. That is really strong. You can finish a game like this, or you, in the hair, you, it's a really good creature. It doesn't die for most of uh, like early removal. So I think it's a good and common creature. Then also we have this Elvish Rejuvenator, which is a 3 mana 1-1 one, one, that basically when it goes into the battlefield you can just check the 5 cards of the top of your library and you, uh, you can put a land untapped into the battlefield, which is really cool, and then you put the rest on the bottom. Uh, but the fact that it is untapped, it... Uh, it um, on the battlefield? Oh no, it's tapped, sorry guys, I, it's, it's not untapped. Uh, if it would be untapped, it would be really good. Uh, but no, it's tapped. Uh, even so, it's like, it, it uh, searches for one land, it uh, accelerates your work a little bit. It might be okay in some strategies that are trying to go really big. I don't know. Then we have Militia. Militia? Militia. Yeah, Militia. I, I, I somehow mixed in here a little bit. So then we have Militia Bugler. Actually, Militia Bugler is a really interesting creature for me. I think it will be probably uh, seeing some play, especially if there is some thing about human soldiers or you like humans or soldier things coming to 2019 corset. And basically, you pay two in the white for a two three with vigilance, which is already okay. And when it enters the battlefield, you look at the top four cards of your library, and you may reveal a card. Uh, card with power 2 or less from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. So basically it helps you look for another soldier basically because they are really into these kind of things or any other creature that costs 2 and that you really want to have in your hand. So I think it's a really well costed creature that most likely it can be seeing some constructed play. I think it can. Okay, now let's go for the rares. And in the rares, uh, today we got some really cool things, like Demon of Catastrophes. Uh, it's a like simple but gold creature, right? Uh, it's just like, it costs 4, you pay 2 and 2 black, it's a 6-6 six, six with flying and trample and as, as a secondary, as an additional cost, let's say. To, and what is it is what it is, of course. 
uh, to cast it, you have to sacrifice a creature. And I'm thinking, if you are in saplings or something like that, you don't mind sacrificing a sapling to put on the fourth turn 6-6 uh, six, six with uh, flying and trample, for sure. So it's a really cool one. Uh, then we have uh, Desecrated Tom. Actually, I did not re read this one yet really well. Whenever one or more creature cards leave the, your graveyard, uh, create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying. This can be really cool, because you can basically remove your own, your own thing. I'm talking about this in standard, but of course in, in, um, in commander this can be amazing with some strategies like... Uh, uh, like these reanimator strategies that go and always f going through your cemetery so you are always creating little bats it seems like um, a really interesting um, a really interesting card especially for, for commander of course uh, we have nexus of fate uh, which is another one card of getting an extra turn that costs uh, a life and a kidney basically or something no it costs five and two blue it's an instant. Uh, you take two. You take an extra turn after this one. And if Nexus of Fate would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Nexus of Fate and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So it's a recurrent card. That part is okay. It's cool about it. But mm, I still don't think it will be that much of a play. Uh, uh, single, that much of a play. But I might be wrong. Uh, then we have Patient Rebuilding, which is, which is an enchantment. It costs 3 and 2 blue. It is at the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent puts the top 3 cards of their library into their graveyard. Then you draw a card uh, for each land uh, card put into that graveyard this way. So basically, your opponent puts the top 3 of this deck into the graveyard, if he puts like 1 or 2 lands. Most likely it will be one. You get to draw a card. It's kind of slow, right? I don't think it will... Once again, it's a good commander card, for, probably. In certain strategies, I think it can see play. Uh, other than that, I'm not really seeing where this is going to be good. I guess in a really weird uh, milling deck, but... Uh, man, I'm not seeing it. I'm, not, I'm really not seeing it work. Okay, the other... The two rares are actually interesting is Gigantosaurus, it costs 5 green and is simple 10-10 dinosaur. It's like as simple as it gets. If you can give trample or something to this guy, this can be a really tr a real threat. Or fling it or some stuff like that. Man, I'm, I'm thinking this can be really cool. But most likely it will be just one of those big fat things that won't see that much play. But I might be wrong since we still have a few fat thing is that are seeing a lot of play in uh, this monogreen stomp is so I don't know it might be a, a interesting card we have judgment inferno which is actually an interesting thing it's a card that was made to deal with Eldrazi it seems and it's basically ex you exile a target colorless creature you gain life equal to its power so it's a really good anti Eldrazi strategy but Basically, that's what it is, right? Either this or the artifact creatures. And it will be probably a sideboard staple in a lot of modern decks, I think. Other than that, I'm not really seeing how... I, I think it was made to be to do that. As simple as, as, simple as that, I think it was made just to, to deal with uh, Eldrazi. And last but not least, we have the Mythic of the Day. And the Mythic of the Day is Vivian Reed. Which is a new Planeswalker. Vivian is an interesting Planeswalker. I don't think he's that much powerful. It's more like a, of a stompy kind of Planeswalker. Like a green creature thing. And... Okay, let me just read it for you guys. And then you, you can leave it in the comments saying me what you think about it. It costs 3 and 2 green. It, it is a 5 uh, loyalty Planeswalker. And basically you look at the top 4 cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card... Uh, or land from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order, like usual thing, right? So basically you get a six, uh, a six loyalty if you do the plus one at the fifth turn and you go search a creature. It's not that great. Uh, but then the minus three is like destroy target artifact, enchantment or creature with flying. And in here we see some flexibility of the planeswalker. I, I kind of like this part. 
especially because it protects against flyers. And if you are really going low to the ground, most likely you'll be able to protect your creature on the ground, but not on the sky. So if she gets in and she kills a flyer, it's always great for you also. So that's where I see that she might be some play. Uh, see some play is the, in these uh, mono green stompy decks that want some extra protection against flyers and to deal with them sometimes. In there, I think it's cool. And then her ultimate is you get an emblem with creatures you control get plus two plus two and that vigilance trample and indestructible. And at that point, if you are with giant dinosaurs in the table and stuff like that, uh, and uh, that annoying three three mana elf that is a five three a five four that I don't even remember his name right now, and um, you win the game basically, right? Because if you were able to put it to put the game to that 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 level, let's say, and you still push out the the ultimate from her, I think you just won the game. So it's basically a little bit of a win more situation. So, do I think she'll see play? Probably. In more like of a tier 2 deck uh, thingy, but not really in a highly competitive thing. But I might be wrong. So, these were the spoilers for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, the new format of things that we are doing here in the channel. Uh, I'll try to be concise with this. And that was it. I hope you everyone liked the, the video of today. I'll... Um, Tomorrow uh, I will be streaming again, like usual. Most likely it will be constructed. And that's it. So for everyone that checks the video, thank you and goodbye.